Yo, what's going on guys? We have the new meta snapshot for patch 10.13. Let's just get right into it. This is going to be a quick video because not too much has changed since the last patch, which we kind of expected. I will note that we do have a new comp, which is the battle cast comp, which we'll get into later. But right now we have everything at the top here. S tier, Rebels, Cybernetics, Blaster Brawler. I highly recommend just playing Jinx or Vayne Carry. Uh, those two comps are just by far the best. Jinx being even better because she fits in both Rebels and Brawler Blaster. And yeah, Jinx is just super broken even after the nerfs. Everyone's playing her. She's probably like the most played four cost right now. After these comps, we have the Sorcerer builds, either Sorcerer plus Riven, Sorcerer Mech Pilot. Then we have Vanguard Mystic. Sniper fell a lot down to B tier. I had these guys in A tier before, but snipers just really are not making the cut right now. They're getting outshined by everyone else. You have to afford three different carries at four cost. Sorry, four different carries at four cost. You need Teemo, Wukong, Nar and Jin, and that's a lot of gold. So, so four gold times three gold is twelve times another four because there are four champions. You're at forty-eight gold already, and that's only half your team. If half your team costs forty-eight gold, you're not going to be able to afford that much more. And the rest of their team is also pretty expensive, and you kind of need all of them to get to two stars. So that's why they drop down a little bit here. Six Blade Master, they're in C tier. I mean, if you hit everything, you you can win the game. Perfect item, three star Master Yi, Blade Master Zed. Three stars at yeah, you'll you'll win the game. But that happens so infrequently, so that's why they're C tier. Battlecast, I've seen a bunch of builds on this recently, and it's pretty interesting. You go like Battlecast Ezreal, Battlecast Zerath, Battlecast Nar, I've even seen. And you just go six Battlecast, your Kogmaw heals for a ton if he has red buff. Cassiopeia does really well if she has a Morello Namicon because she heals a ton too, if when if they ever get low, or they deal a lot of damage with a battlecast buff. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. I think no one's figured out the best way to play them yet. I'm sure once they do, this will sneak into B tier, maybe even A tier or S tier, depending on how the build develops. Next up, we have Protectors. Protectors have fallen down a lot. There's just much better paths to get to your late game for these other builds. Protectors really only have one path, and they don't have like the best of item holders. So that's why everything else up here is in S, A, and B tier. Whereas Protectors is in C tier. Again, if you hit everything perfectly, you'll still do well with it, but it's a little inconsistent getting there. E-Girls, no one really plays them, so that's why they're in the back down there. So now we go into the S tier comp. So to play Rebels, you just play the six Rebels, get Jinx carry. Her items are so flexible. You don't need Last Whisper on her. Despite being an attack damage oriented build, Last Whisper is great, so if you do get a Last Whisper, go like Last Whisper, IE, and then third damage item or a defensive item. Doesn't really matter. That's another great thing about Jinx in the Rebel build. She doesn't really need a defensive item. She gets a giant shield. Uh, I think it's like, uh, so there are five people surrounding her, so it's like a 1500 shield or maybe like a 1000 health shield. Whatever the number is, it's a huge number, right? So we don't really need to calculate after that. And that, that way, like, she already has... A lot of defensive capability she gets a huge damage buff so you just stack three damage items on her if you do get a defensive item just put that on her as well she's gonna be carrying a ton of games uh, i like rapid fire the most death blade's really good red buff's really good runons is really good ie last whisper as i mentioned before um there i'm sure i'm missing a couple of them but for defensive items qss is pretty good ga is pretty good and trap claw is pretty decent too um, after that, you play like a carry gangplank. You don't have to play him, he's kind of optional. So you could top out at around level 8 and just have Ezreal and Blitzcrank for the Chrono buff, Blaster buff, and for the hook for Jinx. That's pretty good. You could replace Malphite with a Zed later if you're not running Blitzcrank. You could add in Thresh late game with pulling an Urgot, all that fun stuff. You really just need the Jinx, everything else is extra. So, super strong comp. If you get Jinx early and if you have like decent items for her, which is very easy to do because almost every item works on her, go ahead and just keep abusing her. That's not much else to say there. All right, next up we have Cybernetics. Nothing's changed from last week. You don't need any of the Aurelia items, so maybe that's the only difference, but I kind of stated last week that we don't really need them either. You just need Last Whisper, i.e., Vayne. And I cannot stress enough what the difference in win rate is between Last Whisper and No Last Whisper. Pretty much everyone bottom fours without a last whisper. I rarely see someone get top four with cybernetics without a last whisper. Unless you have like infill Aurelia with like super good items, that's the only way I've seen cybernetic builds actually do anything without a last whisper. But as long as you can get one of these, you are golden and you don't need to worry about too much else. You just need to hit all the units, 
get decent echo items maybe an echo two maybe a thresh two. use those as your secondary carry and just have a great party from there blaster brawler we have again it's just jinx and a bunch of different items i don't know why i don't have red buff on her here oh it's on ezreal but again just build any good items on jinx and whenever i play blaster brawler i kind of like having the last whisper a little more than i do in rebels but again it doesn't really matter you just need great jinx items and then just build the team around her so this one has the four brawlers it's much easier to hit than the rebel version so this comp is going to be really good in the mid game whereas rebels are going to be better in the late game so how do we use that knowledge to our advantage well if you're kind of low health in the mid game go for the blaster brawler build because you're not going to be able to afford to econ all the way to play the full rebel comp because even though gangplank's here you don't need him um, i'm just showing some late game options so the core build is vi nar malphite and blitz and then you have Jinx and Ezreal, and then instead of Zig, since you're not running the Demolition, if you don't have Gangplank, you could just put in any Rebel, doesn't really matter who. Aurelian Soul is probably the best because he steals mana from people, but again, if you can't afford it, it doesn't matter. You're still going to do pretty decently with this composition, just because Jinx is pretty broken right now. Uh, maybe like have like uh, IE Last Whisper or Deathblade with this would be pretty good. Uh, next up, we have the A tier. So A tier, we have Sork plus Riven. Um, no one really plays GP anymore. I'm going to leave this here for now, but you really just want to focus on Riven. If you get to super late game and you get a GP with another Guardian Angel, go ahead and add that in. But the core of the comp is at level 7, and you run 6 Sorcerers. You don't need Xerath, he's a bonus. And then you just stack Riven with GA and QSS, and then a ability power item. I highly recommend going the GA QSS route, because if she ever gets Zephyr, you are losing 20 to 25 health that round, because... Your team's going to melt instantly. So hat is not that important. You could go Ionic instead or any rod item with your leftover items. You really want to make sure you have Guardian Angel and Quicksilver as the top priority. Next up, you have Victor. I like doing blue buff plus an ability power item on him. Though I don't really like Morello Namicon that much because the fights don't last too long. So Morello doesn't get that much value in this build. So that's why I prefer hat on him. But you can't always get hat, so just keep that in mind. But... All leftover carry items go on Victor or Zerath if you manage to hit Zerath 2 star. So next up we have Mech Pilot Sorcerer. Very similar to the build up here. Uh, it's pretty much just whatever 4 cost you hit, Fizz or Riven, you're probably playing that when you're whenever you have sorcerers. You want like a lot of random tank items on your mech, just like any leftovers. And then I like saving the Guardian Angel and like some AP items on GP. Obviously you're probably not going to get double hat on GP, but... I just show that here just in case you get lucky one game or if you're on treasure trove but yeah put random tank items on your mech i like guardian angel qss uh bramble vest is pretty good titans is okay ionic sparks pretty good and just go from there uh vanguard mystic is the next build we have this one is pretty much just a cassiopeia build it's just seraphs morello and rapid fire cannon the rest of your items do not really matter that much I like having maybe like a Guardian Angel and then like a Spell Crit on Jace. Wukong likes Guardian Angel, maybe a Frozen Heart, maybe Shroud of Stillness. Those items are all super, super good. But yeah, just stack some the rest of your AP items on Jace and put all your leftover items, maybe like a Zephyr on Soraka, Lulu, Karma, or maybe a Frontline Zephyr. They, they all work pretty much. I like Zephyring Backline a little more though because it kind of delays the game even longer. And in this comp, you want to delay the game as much as you can. So next up, we're in the B tier, Snipers. Again, this comp fell off a ton. Just because every other comp is outshining it right now. Teemo even got nerfed, even though this comp wasn't that strong at the end of the last patch. So they need, like, a tiny buff to Jin. Because, okay, why would you play Jin if you could play Jinx? Jinx does the same thing as Jin, except she hits multiple targets. Even if you had Runons on Jin, he still doesn't do comparable damage to Jinx. Um, I get that Teemo does a little bit of area of effect damage, but like again, you need two characters to do the same damage as one Jinx. That doesn't make much sense. That doesn't seem very fair. So that's why this comp is just not as strong as the other comps right now. Uh, yeah, it, I, I wish it was because Nar and Nar and Teemo are two of my favorite champions of the set, and Nautilus is really broken. So I, I do wish that this comp was a little stronger than it is right now. But it is what it is. Uh, moving on to the C tier, we have the six Blade Master comp. So this build is, <sighs> I love playing it. I can't deny it, but it's just not that strong. If you hit everything, great. 
You'll probably win a lot of games with it. But if you don't hit everything, you are getting seventh or eighth. So, and dare I say, if someone's contesting you, you are definitely going seventh or eighth with the other person. Unless both of you get like super lucky, but that doesn't really happen that much. The reason why it's so hard to hit Master Yi three star now compared to before is because there are a lot more champions in the pool, I feel like. So it's harder to hit everyone because like they took away Void and Valkyrie, but they added in like 10 new characters. So there's a lot more characters in the game right now. So I find that that might be the reason why it's more difficult to hit this comp. Um, it's still hittable, don't get me wrong, but it's just much harder than before. So next up we have Battlecast. Battlecast, again, new build. So the way that it works is that whenever you deal damage or take damage, you get like a stack of battle casts. And after you get a certain amount of stacks, I think it's 10, you either deal damage or you heal. So that's why you really want red buff on Kog'Maw because that red buff's gonna be taking damage and gonna be adding to his battle cast stack. So he'll get his heal or damage off very, very frequently. There are a lot of flexible holders of the battle cast spatula in this build. So mainly you're going to be using Ezreal because Ezreal fits so well because you get Blaster, Brawler, and Chrono. If you add in a Blitzcrank with Kog'Maw. Uh, Zerath, if you do re make it to late game, he's going to be the best unit because he gives you Sorcerer, because you're always going to play Karma, um, and Darkstar because of that. Uh, who's a Sorcerer? Victor's a Sorcerer. So those are two really strong builds. Um, you could put ability power items on Victor here, but the main carry I'd say is probably Kog'Maw, and then like Urgot's your late game bomb, I would say. A pretty decent build. We'll see how this build shapes up because I'm sure there are going to be a lot of different variations of it going into uh, the next patch as this set develops. Because again, you need pretty much to have battle cast spat if not the comp isn't really that strong. And whenever you rely on a spatula item, it's not, it's not going to be that consistent. So that's why it's down in C tier right now. I'm sure it'll come up later. Um, protectors we're not really going to go over and this comp we're not really going to go over but that's pretty much it starting item priority it's pretty much the same as last week i like sword a lot because i like Deathblade a lot when i play jinx glove is really good for cybernetics because you really want that last whisper armor's great for guardian angel here's great if you're going a lot of the sorcerer builds or the teemo build because you need teemo or Timo and Cassiopeia builds because you need Seraphs for all of them, so that's pretty good. It's also like a good snowball item early if you do happen to high roll the Seraphs, sorry, blue buff early game. So if you get like a random Ziggs, you could use that as an item holder. A random Ari that could be using as an item holder. All really good with blue buff. Bow is always going to be pretty good. Again, you just don't want Negatron or Belt. Yeah. I mean, Rod's not that great either because it doesn't fit in Jinx or Cybernetic comps, but it's really good in Sorcerer comps, so if you're forcing Sorcerer, even then you'd still want Sword or Chain Vest because that Guardian Angel is just so important. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys want to know what items to build, I have an item quadrant down here. I list them out by how strong they are and how versatile they are, so definitely go ahead and check that out on my website at bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. So apart from that, I'll be streaming this weekend from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. So definitely check that out if you want to get better at the game. But yeah, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.